the will. Mm. No surprise that I'm being questioned on that one, but that's okay. That's legitimate. Um, it seems to me as though, in an experience, or in experience, per se, uh, there are two major components. There is that which comes from without. In other words, what my senses tell me, uh, what my eyes see, my tongue tastes, my ears hear, my fingers feel, etc. There's that bit that's coming from outside inward. That's info being sent to me from out there. And the other portion is from within. It's what I fear or desire or suspect uh, that is going on. Now, that's, I guess you could call that bias. Um, for example, I have here on the shelf next to me this. Okay. I, uh, it's a crude image, but um, let's say I showed that to a Polynesian Islander uh, 400 years ago. He would go, oh, all right, let's, I don't know, whatever it is, it's a, some symbol. Uh, if I went to, say, um, a Jewish neighborhood in Brooklyn and flashed it in somebody's face, I might get a completely different reaction. In fact, I think it's reasonable to say that even if there was no overt reaction, the inner reaction would probably be quite different. And I think we all know why. Uh, even though it's the same symbol... It's the stuff that's uh, inside that changes it. Okay, well, one person has been programmed to react one way, and another person has been programmed to react another way. I get that. However, that's not what I'm referring to here. I'm not referring to reaction. What I'm referring to is the experience of seeing that thing, that symbol that I flashed on the screen. One person sees some design on a sheet of paper rather crudely painted. Uh, another person sees many things, and probably much stronger emotions are uh, evinced in this person. Um... What they're seeing is not, in a sense, the same thing at all. Now, the difference is, one person has a strong reaction, presumably. One person has a very lukewarm reaction based upon their... I guess we would call it their will. One person wants and fears something that is represented in that car, in that that image, that card that I flashed. They want deliverance from that image, and they fear the image and everything that it means. Another person simply sees something. It's very little. Um, meaning to them. Desire is in there. Attraction and repulsion is in there. <clears throat> uh, or lack thereof. Now, that too, of course, as you pointed out, could, it is simply explainable as a matter of programming. But that image that I flashed is the entire universe in many ways. All of our sensory apparatus tell us what's going on out there. Whatever meaning or value it has, we place upon it. And I submit that there is something in us that 
wants to control the situation. We either want to control the overt manifestations of whatever we see going on out there. In other words, I see the world a certain way and I want to exert control over the world. I live in a house that I purchased through money that I'd earned at a job that I can't stand doing um, <clears throat> as a means of somehow controlling my environment. In some sense, I think we all have that desire to control what's going on around us. I don't think that we could really function as human beings if we didn't have that desire to control our environment, our outward environment. Um, things like survival are a function of that. Our relationships with other people are that. Our... Um, interactions with the physical universe in every conceivable way are generally something to do with controlling what's going on around us because what's going on around us will affect us. So we want to have some say in what's going on out there and we bend our outward efforts towards that. Now, there are things we cannot control. What do we do about that? Okay, on an example of this, disturbing image of the day. Two people are standing naked inside, locked in, a sealed chamber. In fact, a whole bunch of people are in there. Okay. There are the, um, the shower thingies up there. Nobody in there wants to be in there, and they rather suspect what's going to happen when those showers are activated. <clears throat> that, as the guy said in the Matrix, is the sound of inevitability. Everybody in there has, in as much as it's possible, completely lost control of the situation. Now what? Well, let's take our two people. One person sizes up the situation and says, Oh my God, I don't know what to do, and I'm going to surrender to blind panic. Anyone who's ever studied what went on inside those chambers knows that when they opened it, when the guys in their gas masks opened the chambers and started to deal with what was inside, there was generally evidence of serious panic. People were piled up at the doors. Um, they'd smashed their hands all to pieces trying to break open the doors, that kind of thing. Quite obviously futile. Okay, now our one person is of that bent. He is going to rebel against the sound of inevitability. Do I blame him for doing that? No. <laughs> Not in the least. Uh, this person is in a situation in which he has no control over the matter, and his autonomic system has taken over. His will has been overwhelmed by his desire to survive, or his programming to survive. <clears throat> Another person who's heard the rumors in that situation about what goes on when you're sent to have a group shower. He understands what this means. He has gone over this in his mind. What am I going to do when that moment comes? When I'm standing in there and 
they turn on the shower. Am I going to charge for the door and destroy my hands trying to rip it open? Am I going to trample over everyone else? Am I going to kill whoever gets in my way in my attempts to force the door open? Am I going to surrender to the will to life, regardless of how pointless it is? Am I going to say survival trumps everything? Or am I going to try, at least, to do something else? Am I going to try to at least say, oh, the sound of inevitability, here it comes. What I do now matters. Even though I'm in for a nasty few moments, or however long it takes for the shower to have its effect, the end result is going to be the same as all the people who charge the doors and kill each other trying to get through a door which has been made impervious to all of their best efforts. <clears throat> do I stand here and sort of say, how do I cope with this? Or before I, based on the rumors that I've heard, do I prepare myself for that moment? Do I sort of say, okay, here it comes. There is nothing I can do about this. I'm standing there. I know what's going to happen. I've heard all the rumors, and I see no reason to dis, uh, disbelieve them. Something in me has been gnawing at my mind, which is not fear for a long time. Yes, I am terribly afraid of what's going to happen, but I want to deal with this in as much as it's possible on my own terms. I'm forced in there with everybody else. In a very short period of time, I will be a lifeless corpse. What do I do about that? Do I face this with as much preparation as I can to avoid the mindless panic, even though it's perfectly understandable that anyone would do this? Do I exert right up until the last possible second whatever control I can over the circumstances, even if there is no overt control at all, apart from, say, refusing or fighting against the temptation to blindly charge the doors and kill everybody who gets in my way. Because the end result is going to be the same. I'm going to be dead. Everybody in here is going to be dead. <laughs> Um, does my reaction to it matter? I would say that to some of us, or maybe to many people, that is a fight that takes place every second of our lives. There is that within us that says, give in to what's going on outside, but the why of it, or the how of it, is something I think that people sharply diverge on. We give in because it's a case of accepting the fact that you're a puppet on strings and fighting against the horror of that for as long as you possibly can until the horror overwhelms you. The horror of existence, I suppose, and the horror of death. <clears throat> or we come to terms with it and we wrest some sort of autonomy from that. 
We say within the bounds of the fact that I'm standing naked in a large chamber full of other people, the gas is about to be flipped on, I have options, even though overtly I have none, none whatsoever. I have options. I can stand here and make what I can of the inevitability of this situation and say, up until the last possible second, I am going to maintain control of what goes on in here. I'm going to be the boss. Or I'm going to attempt to be the boss. Or I can surrender to everything and panic and allow what's out there to dictate what my reactions are. It's not really nature versus nurture. And it's not even really a case of programming versus, I guess you'd call it, uh, existence. <clears throat> it's a case of something that's inherent within us that wants to control the situation. In as much as control is possible, we want to control the situation. I would hold that if it was if it were all programming, I would be the guy who would be charging the door. There's one chance in perhaps a billion that I'm going to make it through that door. But I'm going to take that chance because there is nothing else for me to do here. Whereas the person who sort of says this is inevitable explores other options. They say, the will to life is leading me to panic and madness. I want control over this situation. I think this is Nietzsche's will to power. That's the sense in which I'm using the word will. I don't see how we can say that we are programmed to be like that. Because if there is nothing but our programming, our programming will tell us survival trumps everything. And even if you have to charge the doors, even if you have to kill whoever is in your way, even if you have to destroy your hands opening an unopenable door, there, that is really all that there is for, your, for you to do. There are no other options. Let the adrenaline flood your system. Let the panic take over because that's the only possible logical or um, existential, I guess, thing that you can possibly do because your existence is simply your programming and your programming says survive. The other person, as I say, I don't know if anyone ever did this. I don't think anyone can ever know. Uh, the other one says something is more important than survival. That's what I mean by will. I won't say that everybody has the capacity to do that. I don't even think, I don't believe for a moment I have the capacity to be that one person who somehow maintains control of the situation that he finds himself in, in that chamber, up until the breath leaves his body. I doubt, uh, in fact, I know I would not have that kind of strength. I'd be one of those people charging the door. But <clears throat> I won't say that it's not possible to do that. And I certainly won't say that there's no value to that. I would certainly say, ideally, I would like to be that person, that guy, who stood there and said, up until everything stops, my body completely fails, I want to be in charge. The end result for everybody in here is going to be the same. But how I deal with this matters. 
That's what I mean by will.